What's up guys, and it's that time again, USB killer time. Let's take a look at how the Samsung Galaxy S8 fares against a USB killer, but not just the usual one we've been doing the tests with, an all new version 3.0. That's 1.5 times more powerful and two times faster at the voltage surges that it sends to your phone. So this is the latest and greatest in phone technology, but does it have an over voltage protection for the actual USB port? I'm super curious, been wanting to find this out for the longest time. So we've killed phones. One. Oh, we've shit. attempted cars. <laughs> We've done so many things with the USB killer, even consoles. One. Oh, but how about the latest phone? Anyways, I've got the USB killer 3.0 right here. I haven't even looked at it yet, but let's go ahead and do that. And it does come with a nice new uh, adapter set that bypasses security on most phones. So this says USB killer 2.0. I'm not sure if they didn't update the packaging, but I'm hoping they sent me a 3.0. So this is the adapter set, not the actual USB killer. This is basically going to bypass the security on iPhones. So I'm actually going to attempt to do this test again on an iPhone 7 Plus, because in the earlier video, it didn't actually do anything to it, except kill the lightning port. This time it should actually kill the phone, hopefully. All right, so here she is. Now, basically, the adapters that it comes with allow you to bypass any security that the phone may have and get a spark immediately through it. So I'm gonna plug it into the tester shield and we're gonna have some fun today, see what can affect the galaxies and what is protected. I'm gonna try my laser against it, my EMP, just have some electronic torture here. Anyways, let's plug into the USB-C adapter included in here. So it's just this little adapter kit you plug this into and basically this will plug into the phone. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see what happens. So into the brand new Galaxy S8. Hoping to get some sort of spark here. Might be a little hard to see, but here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, wow, that is powerful. This thing can create quite the spark. That's amazing. Wow. Holy crap, this thing is powerful. Okay, so I'm assuming this will do some proper damage. Anyways, before I get into that, let's have some fun with the EMP and laser and uh, see what it can do to this guy. In case you guys don't remember, this creates an electromagnetic field that interferes with the phone. It can really screw up the display and does a lot of damage. All right, so I just wanna demo something for you guys. This is an iPhone 5S and an EMP, what it'll do to it, so. Just like that. It really screws with the display and it can wash it out, do some crazy things to it. So uh, let's get an iPhone 7 Plus in here, see what it'll do to that. All right. As you can see, it starts ghosting, it flipped the screen. So you've got the status bar on the bottom now. Uh, kind of funny. So the newer phones are still affected by it. Yeah, you get a lot of ghosting in there, which is interesting. All right, and uh, the Samsung Galaxy S8 clone, just uh, out of curiosity to see if it does anything to this. But here's my iris scanning, by the way. All right. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does screw with it, but nothing lasting like on the iPhones even surprisingly. Uh, lastly, the Nokia 6. It's a bit battered and shattered from my drop test, but can it do anything to it? The answer is it's a Nokia, not really. So uh, hard to see, but it's really nothing there. All right, here it is, moment of truth. Can the Galaxy withstand an EMP? Oh, it flickers. Let's try the back. Oh, 
Oh, surprisingly not much. It withstood that very well compared to the iPhone. So seems to be EMP proof. Is it laser proof? Let's shine that laser into the camera, see what happens. This is the Arctic laser, world's most powerful handheld laser that's sold in stores. So beginning to record here, let's see what the galaxy sees before it dies by laser. All right, with the strongest mode enabled here, it is absolutely blinding. Let's shine it in this camera lens. All right. It is a burning laser, by the way, so it will light anything up on fire that you put it towards. Ooh, we got a nice big spot in there. Optic <laughs> image stabilization is still working pretty good, though. Let's keep going here. So this is extremely dangerous. As you can see, if it can do this kind of damage to a camera lens, imagine that shining in your eye. But, oh man. Look at that, burn in the camera completely. This is at least more visible than on the iPhone. The iPhone created all these crazy lines right away. This one just seems to be melting something in there. Okay, let's keep going. Just a couple more seconds here. And I really don't want to light this thing on fire inside though. <laughs> you can see like some scarring in there. Ouch, <laughs> check that out. That filter right there. So surprisingly still Pretty capable despite all of that even. And almost. Okay, so I think that's it with the laser. Obviously it is affected there, that's quite the damage. I'm gonna salvage this video and let's move on to the USB killer. All right, so USB killer, let's try it on the Nokia 6, see if we can put it out of its misery here as it seems to be wanting to die. Okay, with the USB killer adapter set in there. Look at it here and see if I can get a spark going. This isn't on USB-C, so I don't know how strong it would be. Actually, no spark whatsoever, so let's just try and plug it in straight into the USB killer. All right, in three, two, one. Oh, surprisingly nothing. So I don't think the Nokia 6 is capable of giving a power output as the USB killer doesn't seem to be doing anything here. Okay, Nokia 6 is invulnerable. What about the Nokia 3310? I know, I know, how am I gonna plug that in there, but check this out. A USB charging cable, the only one I could find that would fit the Nokia. A reverse USB, so USB to USB. Hopefully that way we can get something to happen here. I don't know guys, I had to know if the USB would work on the Nokia. So plugging this into this and the correct charging cable, I believe is, okay, found it. All right, so let's plug in the USB killer, see if it does anything. I'm more than positive this thing isn't capable of outputting any sort of charge to power the USB killer. But here we go, in three, two, one. Ah, nothing. Like Nokia 6, Nokia 3310 is invulnerable to the USB killer, probably because it doesn't output any power. All right, and versus iPhone, let's see if we can get through the adapter, any sort of charge here. Oh yes, it does bypass that. So assuming it bypasses it, I can plug the USB killer in right now and have it kill this iPhone. So let's do just that. Finally, the day has come for this thing to die via USB killer in three, two, one. Oh, I hear that, you hear that? It did like several bursts here and it's keeping on tick, tick, tick. Nothing though, huh? I saw a video where someone plugged this in though and it did kill it. So I'm a little confused there. Nothing now. Well, the home button doesn't work because of this, but the ticking did stop. Let's try once again. Yeah, I think that stopped. So I'm gonna restart this thing and see what happens. And I've got power. So I think this thing might not even boot up because apparently this thing puts it into a boot loop when you plug it in with the new USB killer and the adapter. Oh, but apparently not. No SIM card, no home button. Huh. Looks like this thing has survived yet again. So iPhone is USB killer resistant. All right, how about the Samsung Galaxy S8? And I have a really good feeling that this is gonna kill it as we got a 
really, really strong spark from it before. So, all right, here we go. Plugging it into the USB-C adapter. And with these capacitors that are 1.5 times more powerful, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, I heard a click. But nothing happened to this guy. Did Samsung really get smart here? That's awesome. Then again, it didn't really do anything to the Samsung Galaxy S7 either. Or the Note 7. So nothing happened here. Let's see if it still charges. Power plugged in. Ooh, it does charge still, huh? So Samsung has truly protected its port on the Samsung Galaxy S8. Nothing has happened. I can plug it in as many times as I want. Let's plug it in upside down here. Nothing. Alrighty then, that answers a very important question. The Samsung Galaxy S8 is resistant to the USB killer, and that is absolutely awesome. Man, that's a bit disappointing. I wanted some sort of carnage here, but I guess not, huh? No instant death today. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That answered a very important question for me. So you guys can go ahead and pick up random USB sticks and plug them into your Galaxy, as no harm seems to come from that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Peace. Be sure to check out the other USB killer videos where stuff actually got destroyed on impact. Man, phone manufacturers are just getting too smart nowadays.